Hey, what's going on guys? So in today's video, I'm going to be introducing you to using something called Google Collaboratory. And Google Collaboratory is a cloud version of being able to run your Jupyter Notebook. So it's almost identical to Jupyter Notebook, except you run it in the cloud. And the best part is, is you have access to Google CPUs, GPUs, and TPUs. So for those of you who have computers that have certain limitations, so for example, it doesn't have enough RAM or CPU power or GPU power, um, you could even be running this off of a Raspberry Pi, to be honest. This is a great way to actually go and give your system some horsepower without actually investing your own money into it. So Google Collaboratory does have some limitations, although it is free. And the best part is you actually get access, like I said, to a CPU and GPU. You are limited on certain things. So for example, you can't run your code for more than 12 hours, which is a pretty sizable amount of time, if you, to be honest with you. And I think part of the reason why they do that is they want to make sure that you don't uh, do things like cryptocurrency mining and all that other kind of stuff. So, uh, but outside of that, there's a lot of capabilities that you can do with this. You also get access to a NVIDIA Tesla GPU card, which is a very, very expensive card. We're talking, you know, I live in Canada. We're talking anywhere between $1,500 to $2,000, depending on where you buy it. So plenty of space, and I believe it's got 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which is, uh, which is awesome. Now, the way to get started is what you're going to do is this is what you're going to get um, greeted with when you go to collab.research.google.com. And as you go that, as you go there, you can actually go and use things like your own G drive to host files. You can upload certain files. There's a whole bunch of different things you can do. So you do have to sign in. So all you do is I'm just going to go in and sign into this account next all right so once you've gone ahead and done your verification you move forward and now you have access to a whole bunch of different cool tools in here so to get started all you really do is you would go to file you would go to new python 3 notebook and when you go ahead and open this what you'll find is that this is very similar to using jupyter notebook really and really the best part about this is a lot of the different libraries that you would typically use in data science are already pre-installed so you don't have to go about, you know, setting up a virtual environment and installing TensorFlow and all this other stuff. If you just quickly did a pip freeze on this, what you'll notice now, there's two ways to run this. You can either hit this uh, play button or you can hit shift enter. And as you run this, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of different dependencies that are already installed in here. So you'll have things like uh, TensorFlow and I believe they have, what is it? TensorFlow 1.15. You can upgrade to two if you wanted. Um, but look at all these different libraries that you don't have to worry about installing anymore. And even if you do need to install something, it's very simple. You would just do something like exclamation mark, pip, install, whatever you need. And then you hit shift enter and it'll go ahead and install that into this environment as well. Now, if I tab, tab over here just slightly a little bit, you'll see that I have a whole bunch of different files that I can do. I can either go and mount my drive or I can just upload it here temporarily. They give you a bunch of sample data to work with. So you can go ahead and play around with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use the banking uh, data set and also the neural network that I built. Um, and we're gonna go run this in the cloud. And I'm gonna show you how you can switch between GPU, CPU, and TPU. Now the one thing to keep in mind is a lot of machine learning models right now are written with scikit-learn. And scikit-learn does not support a GPU. So if you go ahead and you pick GPU and you run it, you'll notice that it's actually taking a long time. It's really running the CPU just because scikit-learn does not support GPU at this point. If you have a machine learning model that does not use scikit-learn, then you can benefit from a GPU. And another point when you can benefit from a GPU is especially when you have things like large batch sizes and really large data sets, then a GPU can sometimes be anywhere between four to eight times faster through some of the research or some of the work that I've done. Um, I may go ahead and do something like that in the future, but right now I just want to get you introduced to Google Collab. So let's go ahead and open up that notebook that I was talking about. All right, so this is the bank loan um, data set that I was talking about. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to try to upload this in here. And so it's going to say drop the file, uh, which is great. So anyways, so I have bankloan.csv, which is the file that I used. Let me go ahead and get rid of this. Now, one of the things you may also find is because this is uh, server side, sometimes it could be a little bit slow. Um, but like I said, compared to running something like a Raspberry Pi, this is gonna be way faster. And you can run this on a Raspberry Pi because it is server side. 
So this is what I had in Jupyter Notebook. This is the code that I had that I ran. Um, we're only gonna run up to eval because all I wanna do is I wanna train the model within the cloud. I don't wanna run it. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to run it on the brow using the browser. So browser side, we're gonna run it and I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. But right now, I just wanna introduce you guys to cloud computing. So there's a lot of stuff in here I don't need, but I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste it anyway. So we're just gonna copy and literally paste everything here. There is also a way to transfer and connect to your Jupyter Notebook. There's a way to connect to GitHub as well. I'll do that another time, but for now, let's just roll with this. I will also walk you through something called Played ML in another video, and that's gonna show you how you can use your CPU or your GPU or an external GPU if you have one on your home computer. But let's just get rid of that for now. We don't need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And so it's saying it's using TensorFlow background, so we're good to go from that perspective. Um, Let's go ahead and just copy. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this as is to show you that you can run this on the browser side as well, or on the server side, sorry. So it's gonna go ahead and describe a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm gonna get an error because it says this file does not exist. So that is because here's what you gotta do. You gotta right click here. You're gonna say copy path. And then you're just gonna go up here and you're gonna copy and paste that path here. And it's sitting under content, sample, uh, data, and then bankloan.csv. So let's rerun this. So if you notice, I get almost the same output. It's actually the exact same output here. And so we're going to just continue going down this. And again, remember, this is totally ran on the cloud at this point. So I'm getting my column values, which is awesome. We're going to do some transformation here using Smote. Hopefully it's got Smote in installed. If not, I'll show you how to quickly install that as well. So we're good from that perspective. And then I'm going to test train and split it. And again, remember, because I'm using scikit-learn, I'm not gonna benefit too much off the GPU, although I will show you in a second how you can start leveraging your GPU if you have uh, other type of code that you wanna use as well. So copy and paste here. And now it should evaluate this model. It's gonna run everything in the background here, and then it'll give me an answer. All right, so what you'll notice is that it says I have an accuracy of 98.87% which is you know a pretty uh, pretty good accuracy right there and then finally what i want to show you is if i want to use a gpu it's very simple i go to runtime i go to change runtime type and in here under hardware accelerator if it's selected as none it's using your cpu if i use this drop down here i can click on gpu or tpu and for those of you who may not know, GPU is a graphical processing unit. It uses your graphics card. It has its own VRAM, so you're not clogging up the RAM that's in your computer. Um, so your CPU can do other tasks. Um, like I said, this comes with a Tesla um, GPU. So I believe it's 12 gigabytes of VRAM, in which case you start loading up the, the memory in the RAM. And then TPU is a tensor processing unit. And this is specifically made for TensorFlow machine learning models. Although there is some additional setup you need to do to use a TPU, so I'm not gonna go through that. But it's really as simple as clicking GPU and then hitting save. And now you're actually running your GPU. So if I were to rerun this thing all over again, I can go to runtime and then I go to run all. Though remember, because I'm using scikit-learn, sklearn here, it's not really using the GPU, although I have the GPU enabled. It's really using the CPU in the back end. And the other thing you have to be aware of is after every single runtime, you're gonna have to re-upload your file, which is kind of annoying. In which case, you may wanna actually put the file in your G drive, mount it, and then just run the file directly from there. So if I go to sample data, you'll notice that my bankloan.csv is gone. It's really a matter of dragging and dropping and putting it there again. And then once you do that, the problem will be solved. And there it is. And then I would just go back to runtime, run all, and I shouldn't get that error again. And so it'll run everything for me. And as I scroll down, when it lets me, because right now it's slightly frozen, you'll see that it's running everything in the back end. You won't know that it's running a GPU, but typically speaking, if I'm running a GPU and it's actually using the GPU, it probably would have been done by now because they're just way faster. Though this is not your, your this is not gonna be a use case for a GPU. We will run through an example in the future uh, when a GPU is better, we may do some benchmarking between CPU and GPU. And uh, if I get around it, we'll also test the TPU as well. 
So there's a few things we're going to be testing in some upcoming videos. But for now, I just wanted to get you guys assimilated to cloud computing. If you do have a computer that doesn't have the, the resources that you feel it needs, or it's just running too slow or it just keeps dying, this is a great and free way to go ahead and explore using Google Collab. So if you guys found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. Until then, I will see you guys next time. Take care and bye.